Landorus, with its Earth Power and Sludge Bomb, cannot deal damage to Corviknight at all. So if that's the position Aaron can get this Corviknight in, he might be in a very good spot. Well, we have those two signature Pokemon out on the field to start game number one here of Swiss Round 15 versus Aaron versus Paul, Corviknight versus Koma O, and Cinnaroar versus Urshifu. And this, I again, kind of a great spot for Aaron to be in right now. Corviknight immediately reflecting and intimidate back to the Incineroar means it's at minus one attack. Perfect chance to get one of those bulk ups going if that's what he chooses to do. And of course, the Urshifu very heavily threatens Incineroar as well with those surging strikes, especially considering Aaron is running the Mystic Water item on this Urshifu to even further boost the power of those water type moves. Fake out from Incineroar will stop Urshifu from attacking this turn, and Koma O not wanting the Corviknight to be the only Pokemon to set up this turn goes for an iron defense. So already we have two, plus two defense on the field for that Koma O, plus one defense and plus one attack for the Corviknight. Another setup turn there. I mean, the Corviknight and the Koma O kind of had nothing better to do. Really good position, I, I think, still for this Corviknight. Obviously, that Koma O gets two stat boosts uh, quicker than Corviknight can because the iron defense boosts defense by two which at the same time is boosting the power of body press so Corviknight a little bit behind but when Corviknight gets those bulk ups and uh, another chance to get some possible brave birds off you are threatening super effective damage into that coma o still and of course with the minus one attack on incineroar and the plus one defense on Corviknight really not threatened a whole lot by a big chunk of damage here yeah Corviknight has plenty of opportunities to sneak those bulk ups in Amoongus certainly will not be stopping it this turn for Paul switching out that Incineroar to send that Pokemon to the field. Way better suited to take these three Surging Strikes as well. Surging Strikes oh. comes through and with that Rocky <laughs> yeah. Helmet, a lot of chip damage as well. Not the greatest for the Urshifu there, but thankfully this Amoongus taking some chip damage means that even if it does Terrastalize, it will be continued to be threatened by the Brave Birds coming out from this Coma O. So even though that might look like a little bit of a rough spot for Aaron to be taking that damage, I think that chip damage on Amoongus can be very valuable. Yeah, and seeing that the Coma O also opted to go for yet another Iron Defense this turn, I can't help but wonder what's the condition that these trainers are looking for. I mean, Coma O will have plus four defense, which means Body Press now is going to do a significant amount of damage but that Corviknight as well especially with Brave Bird having that higher base power having that you know recoil damage seems like would be a great pick for Aaron if he wants to break from the setup phase. It is and Brave Bird now threatens super effective damage onto both of these Pokemon on Paul's end. Like you said Gabby the defense now at plus four means that you know you're taking a little bit less damage from that Brave Bird which is coming from a plus two attack but that kind of is made up by the fact that the Brave Bird is super effective whereas the body press wouldn't. And of course, if you want to terrestrialize away from that flying weakness, if you're the Como O, the Como O is Terra Fire, which staring down an Urshifu is really not the place you want to be. No, Amoongus could have terrestrialized as well into Terra Fairy, but instead just going to redirect some damage this turn. Close combat does, I think, less damage than the Rocky Helmet <laughs> recoil. So this Amoongus has done a great job so far of doing the most damage for Paul. Here comes Ooh. that body press from Coma O, brings the Corviknight down to half of its health. Corviknight returning with a Brave Bird into the Amoongus for the KO. Amoongus is KO'd for the first knockout of the game, but that is a lot of damage being dealt to Aaron's Pokemon by recoil by Rocky Helmet this Urshifu has not taken an attack I believe other than a possible fake out from that Incineroar very early on but it's already very very low on HP just from taking those four Rocky Helmet chips and now that the Como O has gotten a Brave Bird off a body press off into that Corviknight the Rocky Helmet the Brave Bird recoil also puts that Corviknight into range for what looks like one more body press as well Definitely one more body press, and it's possible as well that this Corviknight won't even have the opportunity to go for Roost, which is usually what they want to do in this situation because we saw that Como O outspeed Corviknight consistently. You know that Paul has the Incineroar with access to Fake Out. That could also stop it from attacking. And on top of all that, you also have the Wellspring Ogre Pond now, which is more than fast enough to outspeed Corviknight and uh, secure that KO. This is actually like a pretty easy double KO here if you're Paul. Obviously, any kind of grass type attack into that Urshifu on Aaron's end will be enough for a KO. And then I didn't even realize how low the Corviknight got taken by that recoil. Yeah. And that is quite clearly body press range at this point. So even though the, the two turns of setup both went off pretty cleanly for both players, the double the, the, the double effectiveness of the Iron Defense setup for the Coma O in the form of Iron Defense uh, proving very useful here for Paul. It was also the addition of that Rocky Helmet and Amoongus that has put Aaron into a tough spot, but he still has two Pokemon remaining. We'll detect this turn to stop any damage from the Ogre Pond, but Body Press enough to pick up the KO on Corviknight. 
big KO there. The Clover Knight is kind of a big threat. If it is allowed to get a roost off, this game could get pretty dicey. But a smart target there from the body press. Make sure that Clover Knight will not be able to attack before it gets knocked out by that body press. Now Aaron has to decide whether to bring in the Raging Bolt or the fourth Pokemon remaining. Raging Bolt does hit the field though. I believe it is that Terra Fairy, which we usually do see on Raging Bolt. So that does actually give you a great way to resist those body presses and possibly threaten some super effective damage with a Dragon type move. Yeah, Terra Fairy and Assault Vest. It does mean that this Raging Bolt will not also be able to set up yeah. its own boost, but usually you only want one or two Pokemon on your team to take that role. And in this case for Aaron, it's going to be the Ogre Pond and that Corviknight. The issue though for Aaron is that Paul just has follow me on the field. <laughs> like the, the Raging Bolt, it can drink him into the coma O if follow me is not an option. Uh, unfortunately though, that is a move that Paul's Ogre Pond is packing, unlike some we've seen on stream earlier this weekend. Here comes another Ogre Pond, but this time wearing the Hearth Flame mask on Aaron's side of the field, going to switch out that Urshifu and save it for later. We do also get the first terrestrialization of the game from Aaron, turning his Raging Bolt into that Fairy Typing. Now it will resist Body Press, which is great. However, it does give up the resistance to both Grass and Water, which are the two attacking types Paul's Ogre Pond is packing. So you do have to worry about trading off those defenses instead. Koma O protecting itself this turn. Ivy Cudgel now from the Ogre Pond oh. into the opposing Ogre Pond. That's neutral damage, but it brings that Ogre Pond down to just below half its health. Ogre Pond on Paul's side of the field taking about 50% damage as well from a Thunderbolt. I think really smart plays from both players. Going for the Ivy Cudgel instead of the Horn Leech into that Urshifu slot on Aaron's side is really smart for Paul. Urshifu was low enough and had used close combat, so its defense was at minus one, such that the, the resisted Ivy Cudgel would still be enough for the KO, but Ivy Cudgel hits most of what Aaron has in the back much harder than Horn Leech would. So some really big damage onto Aaron's Ogre Pond right off the bat. And of course the Thunderbolt into Ogre Pond on Paul's side from Aaron I think was also very smart. Smart. If you get caught going for a Draco Meteor into a Protecting Coma O or even a Follow Me, losing that special attack uh, would be very disastrous. And a really nice bit of damage there from Thunderbolt. Looks like one more should be enough for a KO. One more should be enough for a KO, but Paul needs to figure out how he can tackle this fairy type Raging Bolt, especially knowing that Coma O has given up any sort of skill type attack coverage for Shadow Claw, which is a ghost type move. We do see a terrestrialization from Paul this turn, and it has to be the Coma O, given that the Incineroar returned to the field for that Ogre Pond. Coma O changing into a fire type here to not take super effective damage from a potential Draco Meteor from Aaron's Raging Bolt. We also see a spiky shield from Aaron's Ogre Pond to protect itself this turn. Body press. It oh, still wow. does way more than I expected, honestly, thanks to all those iron defense boosts. That is a lot of damage. That is resisted, and Raging Bolt is a naturally very bulky Pokemon. That also shows that if Komo gets two iron defenses up and the Raging Bolt doesn't terrestrialize, it will just get one hit KO'd by that plus four body press. Huge bit of damage there, and I do like that terrestrialization. Like you said, Gabby, it does prevent super, super effective damage from Draco Meteor. And the nice thing about having fire in this scenario for Paul is that oftentimes we see players go for steel on their iron defense coma o but that would actually put you in a must worse, much worse spot against this ogre pond on Aaron's side. Fire, though, allows you to resist both the Ivy Cudgel and any kind of grass move from that ogre pond while dropping that dragon uh, weakness. Fake out from the Incineroar will stop the Raging Bolt from attacking this turn, but Aaron finds an opportunity to set up once again. Sword stands on his Ogre Pond to boost attack two stages. So even though he does lose the Raging Bolt here this turn, that Ogre Pond is now such a huge threat at plus one attack overall after the Intimidate. It is a big threat, and now that the Raging Bolt was actually the Pokemon Paul decided to KO this turn instead of Ogre Pond, Aaron does get to bring the Urshifu in, and because the uh, Coma O is now a fire type, Surging Strikes actually just KOs it. You're actually in a spot now where this Urshifu is a kind of a big problem, and of course, because of the Unseen Fist ability, you cannot protect either of the Pokemon on the field. Unfortunately for Aaron, the Ogre Pond won't be able to attack for more than resisted damage, so that Sword Stance does go up, which is nice. It kind of keeps you in this game a little bit, but if your Urshifu doesn't take kind of two KOs in the next two turns, I'm still not sure it'll be enough. There's also the Ogre Pond Wellspring Mask in the back of Paul's party, which could swap in for either Como O or Incineroar and then use its Water Absorb ability to negate any Surging Strikes. Right. So there's a ton of pressure on Aaron to make the call this turn correctly. Who do I target and with what? 
It's true. You might have to close combat here just to make sure you're not giving uh, that Ogre Pond Wellspring form any kind of healing with Surging Strikes. But if you're close combat, you can Koma O absolutely survives this turn. You have to call whether or not Paul swaps out, but there's no switch at all, just a Swords Dance instead. Koma O is going to stay on the field, but unfortunately, oh. it'll take a Surging Strikes for its trouble. And after all three hits, it is enough to pick up that KO. Good information for Paul and for Aaron to see just how that might have actually missed the KO if it was still at full health going into a next game. But for now, Komo -O has been knocked out. Incineroar will use Parting Shop to drop the attack of that Urshifu by another stage. And just like that, both of these trainers are down to their final two Pokemon. They are, and you have to wonder whether or not Paul kind of had to go for a read there as to whether or not a Surging Strikes would hit one of those slots. Now that the Koma O got knocked out without taking another KO, it looks like Ogre Pond will be in range for either an IV Cudgel or a Close Combat coming out from this Urshifu. Although the, the Parting Shot plus the Intimidate coming in, Urshifu now at minus two, Close Combat a little bit less of a threat. But of course we have the Ogre Pond on Aaron's end between the two Intimidates and the two Swords Dances is that plus two attack. This is gonna be really close, Gabby. I think it might still come down to some Protect and Fake Out reads here. You just have to worry about the Unseen Fist, but if you're Aaron's Ogre Pond at plus two attack, Obviously, you can KO Paul's Ogre Pond, but the, the Incineroar on the other side still will be resisting everything. Yeah, I really like how Aaron just went for the double protect play here to ensure that neither of his Pokemon would be flinched and caught off guard. I'm more curious about how Paul targeted this, because I would think he would prioritize the fake out onto the Ogre Pond, knowing that after all those sword stances and intimidates, it's now at plus two attack and then just double into that slot. We actually oh. see the Horn Leech connect with the Incineroar, trying to heal that Ogre Pond up with its health so that it could withstand an attack from the opposing Ogre Pond. And, the and berry. also activate the Citrus Berry from Paul. <laughs> that was a great opportunity to capitalize on otherwise a very passive turn. That was so smart. You know, make, making sure you figure out the Ogre Pond, I think is the right play, but capitalizing on the double protect there to make sure you're not getting caught by a fake out, you not only heal your Ogre Pond a little bit, maybe you can survive a close combat from this range now too, but also your Incineroar is at higher health than it was when it started that turn. I think this match, Gabby, is gonna come down to the speed interactions between the two Ogre Pond. If Paul's Ogre Pond can attack first and KO Aaron's Ogre Pond, then we might see it be able to survive a close combat. And no, Aaron's goes first. Here comes the Ivy Cudgel, oh. and it is enough to pick up the KO on Paul's side of the field. Paul shaking his head. Urshifu is guaranteed to be the next Pokemon to attack. And even with the extra help from that Citrus Berry, it just means that the Incineroar could take two hits from surging strikes instead of one. <laughs> Aaron Brock is up one game to zero in this final round of Swiss. That was a really tight end game there. I think at certain points, it, I, I actually thought earlier on that Paul was in such a strong spot with that coma O, but thanks to him being forced to terrestrialize by that raging bolt threatening Drake a Meteor, that meant Urshifu could come back in and threaten that surging strikes to KO through those iron defense defense boosts. And I, I think Paul maybe possibly made a mistake not trying to catch that surging strikes with the water absorb from the Ogre yeah. Pond. Because at that point when Como went down, and especially because Aaron capitalized very well with those sword stances, it was much more difficult for Paul to make any headway. Yeah, one play that I was curious that we didn't see from Paul was the use of follow me on Ogre Pond in particular, because it did seem like there were a couple of turns where, yes, you do have to guess, is it going to be surging strikes or close combat from the opposing Urshifu? But I do think that the Ogre Pond would have helped its partner by taking some of that damage away. Uh, but for now, you I agree. You know, you were just saying this was a very good start for Paul and Koma O. I absolutely agree. It just felt like the Urshifu and the Ogre Pond just out damaged Paul's Pokemon at the end of the game. Yeah, and that's what it came down to. Once the yeah. Koma O went down, that was kind of all of Paul's offensive threat at that time, uh, especially because the Ogre Pond Wellspring on Paul's end doesn't have the Swords Dance like we're seeing from Aaron's or even Stefan's uh, Wellspring Ogre Pond earlier on in this tournament. And so after that defense boosted Koma O went down, there was not a whole lot Paul could do to threaten a whole lot of damage anymore especially because of the way Aaron set up the rest of his Pokemon. Yes, the Urshifu took a lot of damage from that Rocky Helmet earlier on in the game, but making sure it didn't get knocked out and stuck around to threaten that Surging Strikes into the defense boosted Como-O was more than enough. 
Yeah, and it does make me wonder if Paul's going to consider adjusting his strategy going into game number two here. You know, both that Incineroar and that Amoongus felt like they were there to support the Como O. And as much as it pains me to admit this as a Como O <laughs> believer, I don't think you can dedicate essentially three Pokemon to one attacker in this matchup, knowing how offensive your opponent was playing game one. Yeah, we did get to see kind of how the, the Iron Defense and the Bulk Ups interacted, though. After two turns of both Iron Defense and Bulk Up, the Como O is definitely out damaging the Corviknight. So I guess that's something for Paul to still keep in mind. You know, if I do get the chance to go for that setup again, maybe I prioritize keeping Como O healthy. Maybe I do use that Follow Me, like you said, Gabby, or possibly use that Amoongus to put things to sleep, use that Rage Powder as well. Uh, and now we have the Como O Incineroar lead again from Paul, again getting intimidated by its own self because of that mirror armor in the Corviknight Ogre Pond from Aaron. I think Incineroar could take a little intimidation. <laughs> I don't know, maybe maybe it needs that little blow to its ego. Uh, we'll go for the fake out into that Corviknight to stop it from setting up any uh, any bulk ups this turn, whereas Como O goes straight for the iron defense. Funnily enough, though, Aaron already showcasing an adjustment here. Not only did he lead the Ogre Pond Heart Flame, but also immediately switched in that Raging Bolt so that it can now threaten both the Pokemon on Paul's side of the field. Smart swap there from Aaron. The Ogre Pond there was doing absolutely nothing, uh, especially because this Kamo O was absolutely going to be iron defensing this turn. And in its current state, it is resisting both the Grass and Fire type moves from the Ogre Pond on Aaron's side. And that's, uh, I mean, kind of a clear fake out into Corviknight there too. You know, Corviknight is the only thing that threatens any kind of damage, and of course, if you get one Iron Defense up before it can even bulk up once, you're already way ahead in that setup war. So a smart turn from Paul here. You might probably see him not allow this Raging Bolt to go for a Draco Meteor into the Como as a Dragon-type. I would imagine some kind of Terrestrialization or Protect and re reshuffle that instant roar on this turn if necessary. Well, interestingly enough, we see Aaron off to Terrestrialize first. Oh, no, excuse me, that was Paul. <laughs> Never mind. Como -O and Corviknight are Terrestrializing this turn. <laughs> I, I agree with this play, if only because... Judging by what we saw in game number one, Como O was so central to Paul's strategy, you just have to protect it. But we already see an adaptation from Aaron again. It is still going to be a fairy type terrestrialization, but instead now it's the Corviknight with that fairy typing, which means it will resist the body presses for sure. But we also could see this play out later. That's a plus four defense, Como O. You said that body press is gonna do a ton of damage to not a fairy raging bolt. Here's the opportunity. Not even a bulk up coming out. Tailwind instead, and Draco Meteor does come out from the Raging Bolt into Como O. Still does a big chunk of damage, well over 50% of that Como is HP. So that Terrestrialization did save it from being one hit KO'd. But now, unfortunately, this Raging Bolt finds itself at minus three special attack, thanks to the Draco Meteor drops and the parting shot from that Incineroar. With Tailwind up on the field now, though, it does look like Corviknight and Raging Bolt will definitely outspeed this Amoongus coming in, and the Como O as well. So even though Raging Bolt is at minus three special attack, Corviknight has more than ample opportunity here to use Brave Bird, deal some good damage to that Amoongus, possibly knock out the Como O. It does feel like Aaron is still in the driver's seat and should have an opportunity to sneak that Raging Bolt off the field if he decides he wants to do so. He can easily switch that Raging Bolt out here, but you have to wonder if Paul decides to go for Body Press into that slot. We did see the plus four Body Press, you know, would have two a KO that Fairy type Raging Bolt, so it's safe to, safe to assume it would be knocked out in one hit here. Can anything Aaron sw could possibly switch in survive a body press? Like, or do you just have to take a KO this turn? And of course, because of the plus four defense, you're not gonna get knocked out by Brave Bird. Amoongus probably survives this as well because it's such a bulky oh! Pokemon. No, it doesn't though. Just straight up one KO'd. That was a critical it hit sure from was. that Brave Bird, knocking out the Amoongus in one go. Corviknight will take some recoil damage, both from the attack uh, and here comes that Ooh, Draco okay. Meteor. Como O able to hold on in the red body press. Here's that Calc oh. and it is enough for a one hit knockout there. I think you're okay with that though if you're Aaron because trading your Raging Bull at minus three for an Amoongus feels huge. That's a really big critical hit there. I, I think it's probably safe to assume Amoongus usually survives that thanks to it being a naturally very bulky Pokemon. Even though that is a you know same type attack bonus Brave Bird, uh, unfortunate critical hit because you know if the Amoongus sticks around it can either redirect some attacks later on possibly put some things to sleep but you do in turn get the big KO onto that Raging Bolt 
Yeah, you're trading one Pokemon for one Pokemon, which is kind of nice and all, but with Tailwind up and with this Corviknight and Ogre Pond, you know, relatively healthy still. You can't fake out them both, obviously, if you're this Incineroar. This Coma O is now at very low HP. There's no kind of pollen puff for any kind of healing other than the leftovers on this Coma O to get it be healthy again. So you really have to worry about, you know, how many times do I have to, how many, how many more chances will I get to attack with this Coma O? Yeah, and I love how Aaron is approaching this turn as well. It does feel like he looked at the field and accepted, you know what, you're probably going to flinch one of my Pokemon. Well, I could try and protect, protect this turn so I don't take damage. At the end of the day, I would just be stalling out my own Tailwind. Right. So I'll give you a choice. You know what my <laughs> Ogre Pond wants to do, and you can probably guess what Corviknight wants to do at this point. Let me, let, let you choose. Paul is actually just going to switch <laughs> out that Incineroar though. So Aaron is gonna get, I think exactly what he wanted from this turn with the protect from the Como oh, no. as well. That means Ogre Pond oh, no. free the Swords Dance to negate the Intimidate and go up to plus one attack. And now Corviknight as oh, well no. going for Roost to heal up half of its health. That's gonna put it basically back to full. That's a bit of a disaster turn for Paul there. Not a bad, assumption to make that Aaron will try and play a more safe return. Obviously, Fake Out was in play because that Incineroar had just switched in, but Aaron takes such good advantage of that. Like you said, Gabby, why would you want to double protect in your own Tailwind? Like, I'm not going to do no. that. I'm going to go straight for that Swords Dance. Aaron's been very aggressive with those Swords Dances throughout the set, and it's paid off very well. He's now at plus one attack on that Ogre Pond, and even with the defense boost from Koma, oh, that may be enough for KO, especially considering you have the option to attack with that Corviknight as well. Obviously, Ogre Pond on Paul's end cannot terrestrialize, cannot drop drop that flying type weakness, so a Brave Bird coming through would be super effective as well. Incineroar taking the field once again to negate the attack boost from that Ogre Pond, but this Corviknight is still, I think, the public enemy number one for <laughs> Paul's team. Ivy Cudgel into the coma. Oh my goodness. It's not very effective, and without that critical hit to get through those defensive oh. boosts, even with the Brave Bird, coma oh, able to hold on into the oh Pond, my and it's goodness. a one-hit knockout! That was very not very effective. That was incredibly <laughs> not very effective. That did so little. Even the Brave Bird. I thought Brave Bird would do so much more than that. Obviously, it Me is at plus four defense, and Como is pretty bulky, but Corviknight's no slouch, and Brave Bird's a very strong move. Como is showing, though, hey, I am still in this game. Do not count me out because I will just take one more body press KO for the road. Obviously, Urshifu now should be able to KO with Surging Strikes, but we're still in that position that we saw last game where you have the, the Ogre Pond Wellspring as well. You have the option to kind of absorb those Surging Strikes with the Water Absorb if you can. I don't know that it's such a great idea on this current turn, Gabby, just because you don't really want to take a Brave Bird coming in. At the same time, your own Como O has already done so much you could possibly try and finish this game out just with this Ogre Pond and Incineroar, but that survival from Coma O, the double up with the plus, well, neutral Ivy Cudgel at that point, and then the Brave Bird from Corviknight, that was insane. Yeah, Aaron relying on Ivy Cudgel's secondary effect of having a higher critical yeah. hit chance there, trying to break through the iron defenses of this Coma O, but unfortunately, unable to find any purchase. Fake Out will stop the Urshifu from attacking this turn. Here comes a body press Another from one. Como out into that Urshifu for the KO. Wow. It is just the Corviknight left standing for Aaron. Brave Bird goes into the Incineroar and brings it down into the yellow, which should activate the Citrus Berry. It does. Citrus Berry pops right back up. And it's this Corviknight, even though it is still relatively healthy, it does resist this body press, does not have any bulk ups of its own. And because this Como out didn't take any damage that might still be out of range for one more brave bird so another body press they mean ivy cudgel from the ogre pond in the back paul has clawed victory from the jaws of defeat in this game here gabby i thought the como o is down and out but clearly it had other plans yeah i will say that in this kind of end game situation you would expect to see incineroar really pivot heavily typically so that you could continue to rely on fake out you could continue to um stop Corviknight from boosting its attacks and defenses with body, with, uh, excuse me, bulk up, for example. But because Corviknight's mirror armor ability is in play, this does mean that parting shot would not work against Corviknight. It would just bounce the stat drops back to Incineroar, and then it would not be allowed to switch. Yeah, it's a really rough interaction there for this Incineroar. You kind of want your Ogre Pond on the field right now, but you really can't risk it coming yeah, in on a possible yeah. Brave Bird. 
I think if you're Paul, this is the right thing to do. You just keep going for Flare Blitzes into that slot. Between the recoil from Flare Blitz itself and the Rocky Helmet, eventually you should be able to get your Ogre Prime back on the field. And if you give yourself two turns to go for a Body Press, like a Follow Me Body Press, followed by one more, that's probably enough. One Body Press coming through here just barely does not KO Corviknight. And the Rocky Helmet Chip damage does come through. Actually, a Roost following from Corviknight, too. I mean, over a long enough time scale, we do know that Paul has limited access to recovery here. That being said, though, the Flare Blitz is able to drop down this Corviknight to below, I believe, the body press damage threshold here. So as long as Paul goes for another body press this turn, I think he should be able to lock in that KO overall. But if you are Aaron in this situation, you are up one game, you know that the game clock is still progressing throughout this matchup. And if you think that with the combination of Brave Bird, Rocky Helmet, and Roost, you can bring this down to a 1v1 oh. situation, you are able oh. to win. It looks like Como is knocked out oh, no. by Rocky Helmet. Corviknight hanging on by a thread will have the opportunity to heal itself back up and huh. this is why you continue to play this end game absolutely rocky helmet here actually a huge factor for aaron because como could not freely body press that's something i kind of felt to take into consideration there because if you just keep body pressing keep body pressing eventually the rocky helmet will out damage leftovers recovery exactly. and you won't have a chance to keep attacking and again it was very very risky for paul to try and swap in ogre pond for that incineroar slot earlier on in this game so you don't think you really have the option to do so and now ogre pond is kind of the last shot for Paul here. Ivy Cudgel does have an increased critical oh. hit chance, but it doesn't get the crit this turn. Corviknight now able to heal itself up once again. And now as these turns progress, we are oh. getting closer Come and on. closer to Corviknight winning. Well, that's actually a really smart snarl, though, because keeping Incineroar healthy and on the field is really important. That just means Aaron can't keep roosting over and over and over, and he has to eventually attack and possibly knock himself out with a Brave Bird after a certain number of turns. And the more that you let this Ogre Pond on Paul's side go for Ivy Cudgels, the more chances you're getting for a critical hit with that exactly. boosted critical hit chance, too. This is such a, this is going way back and forth, Gabby. I did not it, expect this. It is, and another important thing and to call out is gone. here is that Roost only had five uses throughout this entire Fire match it is now gone and ogre pond even though ivy cudgel is a oh. physical attack it doesn't make contact correct so ogre pond will not be taking recoil damage or won't be taking damage from the rocky helmet instead corviknight has to go for a brave bird at some point into that pokemon for the ko here it comes it's oh. a one hit knockout it is just incineroar versus corviknight remaining and incineroar is just hanging on by a thread the flare blitz should be able to pick it up here but it went for snarl instead Survive oh. 2 HP! The Corviknight hangs on and will win this match for Aaron. Oh my gosh, Gabby. Paul Ruiz had it. He had a path to victory, but Corviknight, thanks to the power of Rocky Helmet, <laughs> thanks to Roost, and thanks to that Brave for getting the one-hit knockout on that Ogre Pond, is enough wow. to send Aaron into what should hopefully be a top-cut appearance here at the Orlando Regional Championship.